Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome back to the History AI Podcast. I'm Chuck, joined as always by my co-host Marco. Hey everyone! Today's episode is a special one. We're diving into the life of a remarkable figure in American military history, Gunnery Sergeant John Bazalone. That's right Marco Bazalone's story is not just about his heroism, but also about the spirit and struggles of his time. Let's take a stroll down memory lane to Bazalone's early days. Born on November 4, 1916, in Buffalo, New York, John was the sixth of ten children in the Bazalone household. Ten kids. Sounds like his parents were trying to start their own baseball team. Absolutely, Chuck. His father, Salvatore Bazalone, was a tailor who had immigrated from Italy, and his mother, Dora Bensevenga, came over in her teens. Imagine the blend of Italian culture and New York spirit in that household. I'm picturing a lot of hand gestures at the dinner table. And with ten kids, it was probably less of a table and more of a banquet hall scenario. Growing up in Raritan, New Jersey, after the family moved from Buffalo, Bazalone was known to be a charismatic and strong-willed kid. He attended St. Bernard Parochial School in Raritan and was quite the character, often leading his siblings in various neighborhood escapades. Leading the pack even as a kid. But with nine siblings, I bet finders keepers was less a game and more like the law of the land. Definitely Chuck. And despite the bustling household and the challenges of the Great Depression, Bazalone found his ways to stand out, developing a reputation as a fierce competitor in local sports, especially boxing. A boxer in the making? I guess with that many siblings, you'd have to be good at dodging more than just punches. Let's zoom in on Bazalone's talents and early career. After leaving school, John was a jack of all trades. He worked as a golf caddy and even tried his hand at boxing, showcasing his natural athleticism. A golfer and a boxer? He could swing a club and throw a punch a double threat in the sports world. Exactly. But it wasn't just sports where he shined. Bazalone had a knack for leadership and a magnetic personality. People just gravitated towards him. Sounds like he was the kind of guy who could lead a parade if he wanted to. Or at least a conga line at a party. In 1934, seeking adventure and a chance to escape the economic challenges of the Great Depression, Bazalone enlisted in the United States Army. He served in the Philippines, where he was also a member of the base's boxing team. The Philippines, huh? From New Jersey to tropical islands. Talk about a weather upgrade. Definitely a change of scenery, Chuck. In the Philippines, Bazalone earned the nickname O Manila John due to his time spent there. His charisma and fighting spirit made him quite popular among his peers. Manila John sounds like a character straight out of a classic adventure movie. With a nickname like that, you know he's not just another face in the crowd. After his initial military stint, he returned to the US but found civilian life somewhat unfulfilling. This restlessness and desire for a greater challenge led him to the Marine Corps in 1940. From army to civilian life, then to the Marines. John was like a real-life action hero, constantly looking for the next big adventure. So, what made Bazalone switch from the Army to the Marine Corps? After his stint in the Army and a brief return to civilian life, he found himself yearning for something more, something that really challenged him. Civilian life must have felt like switching from an action movie to a slow-paced documentary for him. Exactly, Chuck. In 1940, as the world was teetering on the brink of global conflict with World War II escalating, Bazalone saw an opportunity to make a real difference. He decided to enlist in the United States Marine Corps, seeking the rigor and prestige associated with being a Marine. From soldier to Marine, that's like going from playing college football to the NFL. And it wasn't just any time to join the Marines. The world was in turmoil, and the US was gearing up for an inevitable involvement in World War II. Basil Lone, with his unwavering patriotism and desire for action, knew that the Marines would be at the forefront. Talk about perfect timing. He jumps into the Marines just as the world's biggest brawl is about to start. If that's not having a nose for action, I don't know what is. His decision was also influenced by the Marine Corps reputation for tough training and being the first to fight. Basil Lone was all about pushing limits and proving his mettle. He wanted the toughest gig out there. If the Marines had a slogan back then, 
it might as well have been, join the Marines, because easy is a four-letter word we don't use. Once in the Marines, Basil Lone's charismatic leadership and physical prowess quickly shone through. He was a natural fit, and it wasn't long before he stood out among his peers. A natural fit, indeed. Like a hand in a glove, if the glove was made of steel and the hand was all about bravery and toughness. To truly understand Bassalone's story, we need to set the stage with the global backdrop of his time. When he re-enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1940, the world was like a simmering pot ready to boil over. A regular pressure cooker situation? Only, instead of a whistle, you had the whole world sounding the alarm. Exactly! The late 1930s and 1940s were marked by significant turmoil. The world was still reeling from the effects of the Great Depression, and the winds of war were blowing strong across Europe and Asia. Seems like the world couldn't catch a break. First, the economy takes a nosedive, then everyone starts playing war games. The rise of fascism in Europe under leaders like Hitler and Mussolini was reshaping the political landscape, leading to the outbreak of World War II in 1939. Meanwhile, in Asia, Japan's expansionist policies were creating tensions across the Pacific. So, on one side, you've got Hitler playing dictator dress-up, and on the other, Japan's trying to play monopoly with actual countries. And let's not forget the home front. In the United States, the war initially seemed like a distant conflict. But things changed dramatically with the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941. Talk about a wake-up call. One day you're sipping coffee, the next, you're signing up to defend your country. This global upheaval was the backdrop of Barcelona's service. The world was in a state of flux, and the United States, once isolationist, found itself thrust onto the world stage as a major military power. So, Barcelona steps into the Marines just as the world's biggest drama unfolds. Timing is everything, and his timing was like something out of a Hollywood script. Let's delve into the heart of Barcelona's military legacy, the Battle of Guadalcanal. This was a pivotal moment in the Pacific theater of World War II. The battle began in August 1942, marking the first major offensive by Allied forces against the Empire of Japan. So, this is where the tide starts to turn, and Barcelona's right there at the helm. Exactly Chuck. The Guadalcanal campaign was crucial. It was about gaining control of an airfield the Japanese were building, which would have posed a significant threat to Allied operations. Kind of like catching your neighbor building a super high-tech security system. You know it's not going to end well for you if you don't do something about it. During this intense campaign, Basil Lohm was a part of the 1st Battalion, 7th Marines. He was a machine gun section leader, and his actions during one critical night were nothing short of heroic. Let me guess it was a night to remember? Absolutely! On the night of October 24-25, 1942, Barcelona's unit was defending the crucial Henderson airfield. They faced a regiment-sized enemy force, significantly outnumbered. Talk about being the underdog. It's like showing up to a knife fight, and the other guy has a bazooka. Despite being heavily outnumbered, Barcelona and his unit held their ground. He fought tirelessly, moving along the line under heavy fire, repairing and repositioning machine guns and keeping up the morale of his men. So, he's fixing guns, inspiring the troops, and fighting off an army? If multitasking were an Olympic sport, he'd have taken gold. His actions were crucial in holding off the enemy, and his bravery was recognized with the United States' highest military honor, the Medal of Honor. He was cited for his valiant and courageous conduct, an extraordinary heroism. From a machine gunner to a Medal of Honor winner. That's a story you tell your grandkids about. Barcelona's heroism at Guadalcanal became a beacon of bravery and determination for the Marines, and the entire nation during a critical time in the war. He didn't just fight a battle, he became a symbol of what one determined Marine could do against all odds. A true legend. After his heroic feats at Guadalcanal, Barcelona was brought back home, but not for rest and relaxation. He was given a new mission, arguably as challenging as combat, selling war bonds. From gunfights to glad handing. That's like swapping your rifle for a sales catalog. Right Chuck. The US government had initiated war bond drives to fund the war effort. These bonds were essentially loans from citizens to the government, paid back with interest over time. So Uncle Sam's version of a Kickstarter campaign, but with less quirky gadgets and more, you know, tanks and planes. Exactly. 
And who better to persuade Americans to open their wallets than a war hero? Basil Loan was sent on a nationwide tour. He was part of the Seventh War Loan Drive, famously known as the Mighty Seventh. The Mighty Seventh sounds like a superhero squad. Basil Loan was probably Metal Man or something. During this tour, Basil Loan was everywhere, from selling bonds on the streets to making public appearances and giving speeches. His charisma and the Medal of Honor around his neck were powerful symbols. I can imagine him saying, buy a bond, save the day. No pressure, but I did take on an entire regiment. He was even featured in newspapers and magazines, and got to rub shoulders with Hollywood celebrities and influential politicians. But despite the fame, Basil Lone was always focused on the cause, supporting the troops still fighting overseas. From the jungles of Guadalcanal to the glitz of Hollywood, talk about a plot twist in the story of Manila John. Yet, despite all this fanfare, Basil Lone was itching to return to active service. He believed his place was with his fellow Marines on the front lines, not in the limelight. A hero's heart never rests. Even the flashbulbs of fame couldn't outshine his call of duty. After his stint as a war bond superstar, Basil Lone felt a strong pull back to the military life. He requested to return to active duty, a move that surprised many. Most Medal of Honor recipients were kept out of combat to protect them as national heroes. It's like the star quarterback asking to go back to playing high school football at 70. Unheard of. But Basil Lone wasn't content with just being a hero. He wanted to be where he felt he was needed most, with his fellow Marines. Initially, he was assigned to train new recruits at Camp Pendleton in California. Picture this, you're a fresh-faced recruit, and who's your trainer? None other than John Basilone. That's like taking batting practice with Babe Ruth. Exactly, Chuck. His experience and valor made him an exceptional instructor. He trained the recruits not just in combat skills, but also instilled in them the spirit and discipline of a Marine. His sessions were known for being tough yet inspiring. I bet nobody dared to snooze during his lectures. But training recruits wasn't enough for Basil Lone. He petitioned repeatedly to be sent back to the front lines. Finally, his request was granted, and he was assigned to the 5th Marine Division, which was gearing up for action in the Pacific. Back to the action, just like he wanted. You can take the hero out of the battle, but you can't take the battle out of the hero. In late 1944, Basil Lone shipped out with his unit to the Pacific Theater. He was part of the preparations for the invasion of Iwo Jima, a strategic island close to Japan. Iwo Jima? That's not just jumping back into the frying pan, that's diving into the fire. Indeed Chuck. The Battle of Iwo Jima was anticipated to be a crucial, yet extremely challenging campaign. Basilone's experience and leadership were invaluable assets as his unit prepared for what would be one of the bloodiest battles in the Pacific. From selling bonds back home to preparing for a key battle in the Pacific. Basilone's story keeps adding remarkable chapters. The heroism of John Basilone, unfortunately, reached a solemn end during the Battle of Iwo Jima in February 1945. Iwo Jima was a pivotal battle, critical for providing airfields close to Japan. A crucial stepping stone in the Pacific, but with a high price tag. Basilone's unit was part of the initial assault on February 19. He was now a gunnery sergeant, leading his marines onto the volcanic sands under heavy fire from Japanese fortifications. Like walking into a storm, but the rain is made of bullets and the thunder is artillery. On the first day of the battle, Basil Lone once again showcased his extraordinary bravery. He single-handedly destroyed an enemy blockhouse, allowing his unit to advance. Later, while aiding a tank trapped in an enemy minefield, Basil Lone was mortally wounded by shrapnel. A hero to the end. He went out as he lived, leading from the front and looking out for his fellow Marines. Basil Lone's death was a significant loss. He was posthumously awarded the Navy Cross for his actions at Iwo Jima, adding to his already legendary status. Medal of Honor, Navy Cross. Basil Lone was more decorated than a five-star general's Christmas tree. His legacy extends far beyond his medals. Basil Lone has been honored in numerous ways. The U.S. Navy named a destroyer, the USS Basil Lone, in his honor. Streets, monuments, and even a postage stamp carry his name. From Raritan to the halls of history. That's quite the journey for Manila John. His life story continues to inspire. He embodied courage, selflessness, and dedication, traits that define the very best of the Marine Corps and the American spirit. 
He wasn't just a Marine's Marine, he was America's Marine. A true legacy of bravery and service. Basilon showed us what one man, with grit and determination, could achieve in the face of overwhelming odds. Absolutely, Chuck. John Basilone's story is a testament to the power of courage and the enduring spirit of those who serve. A hero in every sense of the word. Thanks for joining us on this journey through John Basilone's life. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the History AI podcast. We appreciate your support. Keep tuning in for more dives into history. Until next time. Step into the thrilling world of sports betting with The Starting Line, an introduction to sports betting. Whether you're a beginner or simply curious, this comprehensive guide takes you from the basics to the advanced. Learn to decode odds, develop winning strategies, and bet responsibly. Get your copy now and transform every game into an adventure. The Starting Line is your first step towards mastering the art of sports betting. Available on Amazon.